Gary Webb's official cause of death is still considered a suicide, despite the fact that he had not one, but two gunshot wounds to the back of the head. Did the CIA actually sell crack in the 80s? For decades, the American government has been accused of intentionally flooding the streets with hard drugs. The CIA and law enforcement have supposedly been funneling drugs into the inner cities and to the African-American community in- Bro, the CIA peddles drugs harder than I f***ing pedal the top of the hour ad break, okay? Here's the woman ad break now. In particular, as part of a covert effort to stop them attaining stability, building wealth, and achieving political power. Much it like, yeah, much like your drug dealer, I'm also late on delivering your top of the hour ad. You know what I'm saying? All right, I gotta pee real African-American, there's no doubt about that whatsoever. And for the other non-African people, they should know that this directly will harm them too. These ideas took particular hold in the 1980s with the emergence of the so-called crack epidemic. No it's easy to understand how people of color may not believe the US authorities have their best interests at heart. But do these particular drug charges stick? Did the intelligence agencies actually play a role in flooding American cities with cocaine? In this episode, we're exploring whether the CIA was actually responsible for the crack epidemic and how exactly this story gained so much traction. The story of the CIA and crack cocaine doesn't actually begin on the streets of LA or Miami. It begins in the jungles of Central America. In 1979, the dictatorial government of Nicaragua was overthrown by socialist revolutionaries called the Sandinistas. In response, right-wing groups known as the Contras began a brutal paramilitary campaign, receiving money and weapons from the CIA as part of the Cold War struggle against the Soviet Union. If we cut off the freedom fighters, we will be giving the Soviets a free hand in Central America, handing them one of their greatest foreign policy victories since World War II. But in 1982, Democrats in Congress passed laws to cut off support for the Nicaraguan rebels. So the Contras and their CIA backers had to find new ways of funding their struggle. What they found was cocaine. By the late 1970s, more people in the US were snorting coke than ever before. Most of it imported from Colombia. In the early 80s, smokable cocaine, or crack, exploded across American cities. This proved to be a gold mine for countless organized crime groups, even those backed by the CIA. And today, cocaine and marijuana are found throughout our society from top to bottom. And that means corruption top to bottom and gang war violence. The Contras were soon linked with Colombian cartels and in 1985, How'd they get the reporters there? Robert Parry and Brian- How'd the cocaine get here? This is crazy. Barger broke an almost unbelievable story. They claimed Nicaraguan rebels were involved in cocaine trafficking, and that not only did the CIA know about these activities, they allowed them to continue in order to help fund the Contra's war effort. When Bob Perry and Brian Barger got a hold of a CIA report revealing- What's the biggest epidemic of this, um, of the 2020s, and even leading up to like late 2010s, 2020s? Fentanyl, right? Heroin opioid epidemic right hmm. it's crazy just you know cia would never involve themselves with that one as well right i i mean certainly not just like wherever wherever black budgets can be beefed up find uh drugs that can can fill up those coffers the american government suspiciously will be um controlling territories somehow that they were working in the mid 1980s with Contras fighting the Sandinista government. They were warned by their editors that this was not something that was. Don't forget, Afghanistan uh, uh, poppy it doesn't actually uh, go into America. Uh, that fentanyl is coming directly from uh, Mexico. Now, the link between um, you know the cartels in Mexico and uh, special forces training that one is a little bit shakier. Uh, the Afghan fentanyl, the, the Afghan opium that actually ended up on the streets was just in the streets of Europe and everywhere else. Or not fentanyl, the heroin. Fentanyl is synthetic; it's not made of opium. Sorry. It was going to make the people that own their newspapers very happy, and both of them ended up losing their jobs. At this point, the CIA strongly denied that they were involved in the drug trade. But on the streets, the rumors began to spread. Yeah, no, pharmaceutical grade opium comes from Tasmania. That's different. That's not what we're talking about. And that is actually, you know, 
bought and sold by pharmaceutical corporations, which are also responsible Hashtag for the oil. opioid uh, crisis, the opioid epidemic. Fentanyl in the United States comes from Mexico, majority of it. Opium, or uh, the heroin that you see, street-level heroin that you see in other parts of the world, not America, come from Afghanistan. That the government was either actively or passively allowing crack to be sold. These remained just rumors until 1996, when a reporter with the San Jose Mercury News named Gary Webb picked up the story from a new angle. Webb investigated the case of Freeway Rick Ross, who in the early 1980s was the most important kingpin in LA's crack scene, and probably America's first ever crack millionaire. What's the most money you ever made in a day? Three million dollars. <laughs> what Webb uncovered was that Ross's main cocaine supplier was a guy named Danilo Blandon, a Nicaraguan exile who funneled tens of thousands of dollars. Which, by the way, fun fact, Rick Ross, the, the Rick Ross Teflon Don, Rick Ross that you know as the rapper, was actually a CO and just like totally fucking stole this, you know, highway Rick Ross's name, become a rapper, but he was actually a CO. Dollars in cocaine profits back to the Contras through banks in Miami. Blandon, in turn, worked for Norwin Menises. Perhaps the biggest not drug highway, freeway in Nicaragua, Rick Ross, sorry. who had deep ties Whatever, to the dude. Contra leadership and was widely thought to benefit from CIA Shut protection. No one the TEA had always tried to arrest Nora Manessas, who was living openly and raising money for no, the No, a lot of people don't know that. Been people literally don't know Rick Ross, the rapper, is a CO. Like, they, they don't realize that. High-speed rail Rick Ross? Yeah, talk to me when you're high-speed rail. He was a cop. He, he worked in the prison system. Him, I got photos. There you go. Have you never seen this? Like, you guys have never seen this? able to build a case against him and felt like there was something about this guy that must explain why they couldn't do that, that he was protected in other words. And when Gary Webb's story came along, he not only showed where the connection was between Manessas and Blandon and Freeway Ricky Ross, but he also went into all this history and unveiled how there was a very large, well-documented crack distribution ring that had operated for years with the CIA turning a blind eye. What's the process you go through? Um, like, okay, you're- I love the Jim Norton show is like the revelatory now. investigative reporting component here is the fucking Jim Norton show, dude. That's hilarious. I'm sorry. <laughs> you're the guy on top. And where do you get your coke from? I was getting my coke from a guy by the name of Oscar yeah, Danilo right, Blandon, please. who uh, also was my informant. He's a guy that set me up with the police. Uh, when I went to trial, we found out that he was what they call a Contra. Uh, the Contras was backed by the CIA, and it sparked this big investigation by this reporter called Gary Webb. In August of 1996, the Mercury News published Webb's reports in a three-part series titled Dark Alliance. The story grabbed attention across the US, particularly amongst the African-American community, which had been targeted by law enforcement following the rise of crack. Tell America what the story is about. It was about a cocaine ring that operated along the west coast of the United States. Uh crazy what happened to this guy you know he just felt really fucked up about everything that he uncovered i guess you know he just felt conflicted and um i guess he didn't have uh you know the the logic song to listen to so so United crazy states uh throughout most of the 80s and some of the money they were making was going to support an army that the men who ran the cocaine ring worked for called the fdm this was an army that the cia Literally, for those of you who don't know what I'm saying, Jeffrey Epstein is not the last or the first time that an important asset to our three-letter agencies suspiciously suicided themselves, you know, or was suicided. Um, Gary Webb's official cause of death is still considered a suicide, despite the fact that, uh, you know, he had not one, but two gunshot wounds to the back of the head. Impressive. They started in 1981 and supported better known to us, most of us who remember Contra. news, the Contras. Nowhere in Dark Alliance did Webb explicitly assert that the CIA was responsible for the crack epidemic, let alone that they intentionally sold the drug. But that was the narrative that got picked up in the popular imagination, probably not helped by the Mercury News illustrating the feature with an image of a guy smoking a crack pipe superimposed on the CIA logo. But the story took off not just due to his explosive claims, but also because of another new and highly addictive force that had begun to reshape American society, the internet. Dark Alliance was the first major piece of investigative journalism to be published simultaneously in print and online. The story went viral, 
getting picked up by everyone from street protesters to talk radio hosts and eventually politicians looking to attack the Reagan and Bush administrations. California Congresswoman Maxine Waters became a particular champion of the piece. As a public elected officials, all of us must be concerned that our government could have anyway been involved in drug trafficking. The reaction to the story was so intense that the CIA director took the unprecedented step of defending the agency at a heated LA community meeting. It is an appalling charge that goes to the heart of this country. I will get to the bottom of it and I will let you know the results of what I found. How are we supposed to trust the CIA official to investigate themselves? What was equally shocking though, was the reaction of America's mainstream media. Webb and the San Jose Mercury News often maintain that Dark Alliance was intended as the beginning of an investigation that larger newspapers with more resources could then continue. But what actually happened- I just wanna point something else uh, out again. He was found dead in his home and the official ruling was suicide. And I wanna mention once again, that there weren't one, but two gunshot wounds. Two incredibly sloppy shit, okay? Two. What happened was that instead of investigating the CIA, major papers like the LA Times, Washington Post, and New York Times all attacked Webb himself. Oh, Webb yeah. was eventually hounded from his job and found himself unable to work as a journalist. He died by suicide in 2004. Oh. Oh, come on. That's it? That's... Oh, come on, dude. Are you serious? That's all they, is they, all they say about this? All three major newspapers felt completely caught off guard by this story. So they fully attacked Gary Webb with a vengeance, unlike anything that had ever been seen before, and completely attempted to not only discredit his story and frame it as a conspiracy theory, but pretty much ruin his entire reputation. We saw a complete failure perhaps one of the most shameful examples of how the mainstream press can operate uh, in destroying. For the record, the reason why I wanted to mention it is because Vice didn't even mention the two gunshot wounds, not one, two gunshot wounds, okay? I just want to mention once again, not one, two gunshot wounds to the back of the dome in this apparent suicide. A fellow journalist for getting at an important story. Uh, and Webb um, suffered mightily for this. But as people got more and more lost in the minutiae of attacking or defending Webb's journalism, the focus- Yes, that's where the meme, uh, two uh, suicide by two shots in the back of the head comes from, yes. On the CIA's involvement in the drug trade began to get lost. A fact that internal CIA documents held up as a good example of managing a public relations nightmare. But in 1998, the CIA's own Inspector General released a report essentially admitting that many elements of the Dark Alliance story were true. That the agency had known that people linked with the Contras were importing cocaine, had done nothing to stop them, and had even protected them from investigation. So By the way, this is the, this is the part of it that is like really fucked up. Years later, they will conduct an investigation but because the media is always operating in unison with the State Department, because the media is always operating in unison when it comes to foreign policy issues that ends up becoming like domestic policy problems, nobody gives a fuck when they declassify this shit. At the time when you mention it, you're looked at like a fucking psycho. You're like, oh, pfft, whatever, dude, get the fuck out of here. Yo, oh, there's a conspiracy, there's a conspiracy. And then years later, the CIA is like, oh yeah, we did that. It was, it was actually pretty cool when we did that. And it's not a big deal, actually. So shut the fuck up. Alex Jones take? I know. Well, my, my takes on Alex Jones are also interesting as well, if you want to know that. I 100% think Alex Jones is a CIA op. Straight up. I believe it. I 100% believe that Alex Jones is a CIA op to vilify conspiracies that are real conspiracy to murder conspiracies like fucking the jeffrey epstein's murder shit like that will look strange when you have a guy championing conspiracy theories that also say that and a million other things that are psychotic think about it i think the real conspiracy in that situation is having a guy having a very loud and very fucking public face of like all conspiracy theories be someone like Alex Jones. Do you genuinely believe that or is that just a meme? No, I, I do. I do believe it. I do. I, li I do believe it. Especially because like, you know, Joe Rogan loves uh, uh, fucking having CIA assets on his show and being like, oh, I love conspiracy theories. And then he has like Alex Jones and like fucking Mike Baker or whatever on. Since I first heard that from you, I believe it 100%. Yes. 
Now you're reaching? Yeah, dude. The, <laughs> the American intelligence apparatus would never do such a wild thing. They would also never fucking, you know, use LSD to try to figure out ways of mind controlling people or a million other things that they've literally done that they openly declassify afterwards. You know, oh man, our... Our, our, our intelligence apparatus would never fucking infiltrate, intercept black radical uh, communist groups and even assassinate their leadership, like literally directly at night while they're sleeping. Uh, things like that could never happen. Those are all conspiracy theories. Like none of that is a conspiracy theory. Those are all well-documented, factually true, factually correct that they straight up fucking openly admit. That's the crazy thing is that like everything I just mentioned to you, Everything I just mentioned to you just now is openly declassified information. None of it is a secret. Now, at least. I'm pro Hanlon's razor. Never attribute to Mal's, but you can attribute to stupidity. Honestly, I don't know, man. It's the shit they do not declassify that you have to be really uh, suspicious of, is all I'm going to say. You had uh, the CIA finally coming to the table and admitting that what we reported in the 80s and what uh, Webb reported in the 90s was in fact true. Mr. Manessis was actually- Wild, dude. Written in pain, Gary Webb planned, planned his death with polite precision. He typed out four lengthy suicide notes and put them in the mail to family members. He placed his pre-arranged cremation certificate. This article, unironically, and trigger warning, suicide, I'm gonna read this. This article unironically states, he pulled the trigger and the bullet sliced uh, through his face, exiting his left cheek, a non-fatal wound. So he pulled the trigger again. He literally shot himself in the head with his revolver twice. Wild to consider that the New York, uh, the Los Angeles Times would just write uh, such insanity so openly. No, it is non-fatal. You can a lot of a lot of suicides to the head. Uh, a, a, a lot of a lot of uh, a lot of times when people try to kill themselves with a gun by putting it in their mouth or whatever, they fucking miss and then they fuck themselves up for the rest of their lives. Like it's a lot difficult. It's a lot more difficult than you would think. Nobody fucking shoots themselves twice in the head. You hear the story of of people surviving and then being fucked up permanently for the rest of their lives. You don't hear the story of them, you know, ever. I mean, ever double tapping themselves it actually happens the first shot they aren't sure and anxiety comes in they don't get it right they gain the confidence that's literally not true that's fucking straight up i know he wrote suicide letters to his family and his ex-wife believed it was suicide that's crazy you, you never forge shit like that you're right i mean the the fbi never famously tried to get martin luther king to commit suicide um by writing such letters for example not on behalf of him but to him and blackmailing him regularly to try to uh you know let's continue he indicted in 1984 he was known within uh, my own sources in dea told me he was known as a el Jale de la droga the king of drugs uh he was in more than 40 files and indicted mysteriously and people within dea say that it was cia intervention that kept this sealed indictment from ever being opened in one case detailed in the report, when traffickers linked to the Nicaraguan king of drugs, Norwin Menises, were busted in San Francisco in 1983, the CIA even requested that tens of thousands of dollars which had been seized be returned to the drug traffickers. The CIA admitted that they knew that these guys were selling drugs and had went to the Attorney General and asked the Attorney General could they not report it. Uh, because the mission that they were trying to accomplish was so big, it was a matter of uh, uh, U.S., uh, what do they call it? National security? National security. So wait, the U.S., the, the CIA was allowing this, this kind of to happen, the, the drugs to go in, and they were just, they weren't putting it there, but they were allowing it to happen and funneling the That's money. That's what we believe. This is a complex story, but let's try to answer the big questions. Did the CIA actually sell crack? On the evidence we've got, no. There were no agents with sunglasses and earpieces slinging what? rocks on the streets. Bro, yeah, the CIA doesn't sell crack in the same way that, like, Hershey's doesn't take advantage of child slave labor. They outsource it. What the fuck do you mean? That doesn't mean they're not doing it directionally and, and totally, not only j not turning just a blind eye to it, but, like, literally doing it, paying the people that are doing it, not investigating the people that they're doing it, protecting the people that they're doing it. That's fucking insane. How can you make this video and then that's the conclusion you arrive at? What the fuck? Did the CIA work with and protect major drug traffickers? Yes, absolutely. 
they've been forced to admit that publicly. The real tragedy here is that as far as- Bro, people think the CIA is a bunch of fucking dudes wearing aviators and like a, a clapping motherfuckers. And it's, at a certain point, they probably had some field agents that were like that, and I'm sure they still do, okay? But now, and even back then, it was like accountants, okay? It was, you know, there's still plenty of fucking analyst motherfuckers in the CIA. They're not going to go out uh, in the streets, and and directly sell crack they're going to convert cis they're going to arrest people and then work with the people that they've arrested and tell them hey you're arrested now bitch you're my bitch now you you're gonna do the things i want you to do it's fine you can keep doing it you can keep being out and about but you're you know you need to do what i want you to do okay which is sell crack why no one thinks that they're like you know dealing on the streets you know what i mean no one as we know no one from the CIA or the mainstream media even lost their jobs over this. The only people who suffered for it were the journalists who exposed the story and the millions of people targeted by the unjust and racist laws that were passed in response to the 1980s. I mean, it, it's, like, they're, they're basically saying they sold it without saying they sold it. I don't know what else to say about that. He's right. The service bureaucracy may not have ordered their asses to do this or even wanted this, but once they internally discovered some of their asses were making money doing this, they decided it was an acceptable outcome to achieve their foreign policy aims. I think the most interesting part about these black budget operations is the fact that the Pentagon has a fucking gaping hole in it, okay? Straight up. Like, a gigantic fucking hole in it. Uh, what is it, like $35 trillion in accounting has just gone missing? No one who knows. And even then, it's not enough. How? Like, there is already a $35 trillion accounting black hole in the Pentagon. So we don't know where $35 trillion is. We don't, we, there's no accounting for it. We don't know where it is. We, we, we will never figure out where it is, okay? We'll never know where it went. But on top of that, it's still, like, even with that level of money being gone missing, it's not enough. And, like, and then we still need to keep funding uh, these sorts of operations to continuously fund other shit that we're doing, other destabilizing uh, efforts that we're engaging in. CIA Gladio'yu kurdu. Komünistlere mücadele adı altında 90'lar Türkiye'ye geldi. Afganistan üzerinden getirdiği uyuşturucuyu Avrupa'ya satmaya başladı. Balkanlar üzerinden bunu yaydı. Şu an yeni bir uyuşturucu koridoru açıldı. Brezilya'dan gelen uyuşturucular Türkiye üzerinden ve Yunanistan üzerinden Avrupa'ya yayılıyor. Turkish people are uh, Turkish man talking about fucking Gladio and, and NATO involvement in Turkey and how it ties back to America's drug running uh, operation, you know, by way of uh, Turkey, opening up drug sale corridors. The CIA doesn't involve himself in that sort of behavior. That's why they swiftly remove rogue agents from the agency. Yeah, totally. I'm just saying it's fucking wild that like 35 trillion is not enough, that they still have other shit on top of that. I love this, bro, what is this? And I thought my country was corrupt. In America, our corruption is legalized. In America, we, for example, don't have bribery. What we have instead is lobbying. We have codified bribery, so it's somehow uh, not as uh, bad Happy for and ass. shitty and, and uh, something that barbarians would do. Okay, we're, we're, we're above that. That's why we literally codified it. We made it legal. So it's not a bribe, it's different.